they want fresh food, they will eat fermented foods, they will eat sour foods. I don't tend to use a lot of rotten foods, one, because I don't want to deal with the odor, and two, rotten foods tend to be anaerobic. So if you seal foods off from the environment, you start suffocating them and preventing oxygen from being in there, they start to produce foul odors. That anaerobic smell is not good for black soldier fly colonies. That what preferentially um, favors house flies. They like anaerobic, they like rotten foods. That's why they're always around garbage. Black soldier fly like aerobic. They like fresh foods and uh, they tend to do better with that. And remember, D, use your nose. Let's see, if this, if it's just rotten bad stuff, just throw it in your compost pile. Don't throw it in the grub bin because what you're doing is you're selecting for house flies and you want to maintain an aerobic colony. There are black soldier fly colonies that can go anaerobic and I'll teach you ways to prevent that from happening. Basically, the best way to take anaerobicity and make it aerobic is just to let it expose to oxygen. So I use, um, I think you guys all have seen those uh, Home Depot claws. I, I buy these by the dozen. They only have them once or twice a year, but they're 88 cents. Just get a dozen of them and throw them on your property, and chances are you'll encounter one when you need it. And that's what I, and that's what I do. I do that with all tools. There's, there's this one claw that I have that I use every day uh, out in the garden, and I like it so much I bought six of them. And I occasionally find one when I need it. But it's just, it works out better. And you know what? You don't have to spend time searching. So anyway, this is one of the best tools for a black soldier fly colony. Why, why it's important, D, is it helps you aerate and helps you fluff it up. If it's too moist, you can add something that's dry, so like stale crackers or stale something like cereal, whatever. The dry stuff can always be mixed in to help absorb extra liquid. I've noticed that uh, Asian foods that have a lot of gelatin and gel, like a, like a I don't know what it is. It's sort of just, it doesn't drain and it's gelatinous. Yeah, it's really difficult to keep that aerobic. So add, add something dry to it and help balance it out, but it really helps to fluff it up, okay? I even sometimes take a little paper waste, shredded cardboard or something, even though the grubs aren't gonna eat it. If it's overly moist, I'll add that and fluff it up because what you're doing is you're, um, you're opening the matrix up. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Brown. So, Carl, this uh, fluffing that you're doing, yeah. it's not killing the grubs that are in there, you know what I mean? Oh, heck no. No, no, no. They're pretty resilient. Um, what I'm going to do is I, I know a lot of you have seen grubs, and I know a lot of you haven't. So I want the people who haven't to come up here. I'm just going to scrape through it just so you guys can see it. I want you to have sort of a picture in your brain. Now, this is basically growing on 100% coffee grounds and also whatever I was eating at the time. So if I had a banana in my hand or a mango in my hand, I would throw the skin in. So I want everybody to see um, the wiggle. I want everybody to see the size. This is probably about the fourth and fifth instar. Yeah, now this, yeah, they have, they can handle the claw. Mm -hmm. But remember, see, this isn't the sharp one. This is the blunt 88 cent kitty claw. Right. Get a whole dozen of them. And Mary, you can include these in your pods yeah, and people, yeah. yeah. Now, look at the wiggle. That's what I so how old are they? Kind of a roll these are probably about two weeks. So. Yeah. Is that mostly coffee? You have there? That's almost exclusively coffee. Is that great? There's a coffee lodge near my house and I picked up 120 pounds <laughs> when it was 95 degrees the other day. I'm like, this stinks. It was so hot, but I, I got it back. And of course, the last bag broke all in my driveway. <laughs> of course it did. Better than your car. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But um, I want you to guys to try to partner with restaurants, try to partner with coffee grounds. You're doing a, a service to the nation, diverting that waste from landfills, and you get free food for your grubs. I notice they shine away. Are they sight -like They coffee? are absolutely negatively uh, phototropic. So they do not like sunlight, um, which is another way you can sort of incentivize them. I, I always cover my pods um, with a layer of burlap, maybe two layers of burlap because that cuts down on the, on the light and it makes them eat up to the higher levels. If you let it open and it's not covered uh, with a little bit of a blanket, they're not gonna ever eat the top because mm -hmm. they're really shy of light. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna bring them to the top, 
you got to cover it a little bit. Now, you don't ever want to suffocate these units and put a piece of wood on top of there. That thing is so, it's respiring so much that you will actually turn it anaerobic. It needs to breathe, so you don't put a lid on there, okay? If you're going to because you have no coverage area like this, you elevate it on some um, four by fours to make sure that there's a several inch gap so it's breathing. But if not, you'll suffocate it. But yeah, they are negatively phototropic and uh, it is so much fun. Now, they're not gonna crawl out of here. This is for demonstration purposes only. But I, trained. So you hmm? want them <laughs> you want it that wet? Like you could squeeze that and it would drip water? This was extremely dry at one time. D, right? D? Yeah. Um, because of their catabolism and metabolic breakdown, um, a lot of food scraps and coffee grounds actually have bound up moisture. It actually makes it moist just the, the process of breaking it down. Mm -hmm. um, I will not add extra water to this because it'll get too moist. What happens is if you start to accumulate water down at the bottom, D, it, you'll get pockets of anaerobicity. And you you can smell, it does, go ahead, smell. There's not anything foul in there, is there? No. Not bad at all. It smells nice. Yeah. <laughs> but your nose will detect it. You, you will know a second you're doing something wrong because you'll smell the anaerobicity. Do you need to feed them anymore? Um, I will keep feeding them. Um, they'll eat, the problem is, they're like piranhas. They eat down food scraps so quickly, you, you're, you, the, the problem, Pat, is you tend to have too little food, so you always have to have food at all times or you'll starve them. You'll come out and there'll just be this mat of, that look like fish out of water, where there's just grubs Pretty and nothing good. else. You're like, okay, we need to feed them really quick because they eat everything down so quickly. It's about 90%, 95% broken down. Will they eat that coffee? They'll almost eat all of it, yeah. It'll, it'll go down, it'll start to shrink in volume. Um, what does it waste look like now? Is that coffee ground still, or is there any grub weight in there? There's definitely castings mixed in. There's definitely um, the exoskeletons, mm -hmm. and there's what's called undigested residues, so stuff that they can't digest. Um, coffee grounds, even though they can subsist on it, they don't break down as much as food scraps, but um, it's a, a wham-bam soil amendment after it's done. Um, you can put it in your vermiculture, for sure or you can put it in your garden. I throw it in my orchard because um, it's close to my pods and I'm lazy. You earlier mentioned the idea of uh, the, either the, the new, new hatching or the first instar um, and the difference between a house fly grub and a soldier fly grub. Would you like to see a house fly grub? I'd actually love to because okay. you make it sound like they're similar enough that you could easily confuse them. Confuse them. And, but for the wriggle, right? Yeah. Follow me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also a size issue, Taylor. Okay. So it's not just um, it's not the erratic just the erratic wiggle. But we're gonna I'm gonna show you this erratic wiggle. You'll never forget it. And you'll be like, okay, I know them apart. Okay. And the scary thing is, people will think you're a little bit off center because you know the different species of fly. <laughs> so I want folks to know to that. that we got ourselves in trouble because we knew that there needed to be some smell to attract them. And so we went for smell longer than we should have. Uh, we wanted smell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you oh, did. Yeah. You did the skin? Yep. Dead fish in there. No, a pig skin. Yeah, come on in, everybody. I want everybody to look in really quick before they bore down. Can you see the difference in the wiggle? Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. Okay. And the size? It's they're more. Faster um, wiggle. Yeah, they're smaller. So, yeah. soldier fly larvae are oh, never that size. No, they are that size. Okay. They just never wiggle just that way. Oh, okay, okay. It's more of an erratic. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Can I see this? Because we do have soldier flies in here, too. All right, let everybody come in so who yeah. Yeah. doesn't okay, know who has uh, house flies. I just want you guys to be able to tell them apart. And I'm pretty sure we have some oh, yeah. pupa in here, by the way. They're tiny. Good. Can everybody yeah. smell this pod, too? Yep. That's anaerobicity. That's, that's what it should not smell like. So the reason no. um, tends to be a lack of oxygen for multitude of reasons. But if your pod smells like this, it means it's anaerobic. You want to fluff moving? it up. You want to add materials that are going to keep it aerobic. And if you don't, you're going to keep getting the wrong species. You're going to get the so house flies. You're going to get the pathogenic microbes, which you don't want. These small white ones are house flies, though, aren't they? Yeah, that's what we're saying. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. the whole point. That's what we're okay. trying. That's what we're yeah, showing. I want you yeah. to, this is what not We made to do. it too stinky. Yeah. So how to get should he start over here? Yeah, there is a blue soldier you, fly. Right? Oh yeah, we got him. Yeah. yeah, and there's lo there are soldier fly larvae yeah, in here too. See, we got we got soldier fly right there. You know. Yeah. See but, the difference? Yeah. Yep. Definitely. 
But we just we we got too much smell, so we got too they're, many. They're just sexier. I mean, let's just admit it. <laughs> but see, there are there there are soldier flies in here. They're just not dominant because we got we went too anaerobic. Mm -hmm. you know? hmm. So actually, Carl, actually, that, that, uh, Pat, don't think you're sneaking off with my claw. Hmm. No, but actually, <laughs> at some point, I want to come back in here and see if we can use straw to adjust this as Absolutely. part of the class. Yes. You know, uh, we'll talk up, we'll talk up. about how to mitigate it. Yes, yeah, yeah. So are they a, kind of a creamy color at that stage? They're or? both kind of light colored, so okay. it's difficult to tell based it's on the, the color. Wiggle. Now, when they're mature, you're going to get um, both species yeah. in your harvest bucket at the first two weeks, two and a half weeks. The house flies don't change color. They're still cream colored. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get cream-colored black soldier fly in your collection bucket. If it's too hot, you will. And I'll talk about that in Q&A okay. and what issues you may encounter. But high heat over 105, 110, you'll get premature crawl off of the cream colored grubs in your bin because they uh, are trying to evacuate and escape dying because it's too hot. Coffee grounds tend to be, um, because they're steamed and, and percolated, sterile. So they tend to have a lot less microbial activity than let's say food scraps. Um, because of that, may be the reason that you don't get as much bioconversion because it is about microbes. But if you're mixing in other things with food scraps and everything, the coffee grounds seem to catch up. Be willing to bet this is cleaner than your average kitchen counter, however. But, but, but I realize yeah, you yeah. need to be safe. And there's very little compost produced with these units. Mm -hmm. It has mostly the, the beneficial byproduct is the grubs. Way down the list is the compost, which I don't even call compost. I call it undigested residue. It's basically whatever's left. Because this species is so fast, your waste hasn't had time to compost. So it's undigested residue that is still needing to be composted. So if you think of it that way, and at the end of the season, what I do is I take the undigested residue, I dump it in my compost bin. That's what I was curious. Is like, when would that, could that be incorporated yeah. in a vermiculture so that, bin? That's Absolutely. It's the best thing you can feed them. How would char or biochar or just char work with these in some beneficial ways? Um, we do have several people, when they stage the big pods and they elevate it on bricks, they mix it with mulch and biochar underneath and apparently the effluent that drains naturally mixed with the biochar is an incredibly microbial rich uh, soil now? amendment. So it's not just the biochar, it's the biochar with infused microbial activity. Mm -hmm. Apparently the microbes that come off the black soldier fly pod from the liquid effluent energize the biochar extremely well. We have not done research. I just know this from ancillary people telling me and emailing saying, Carl, this stuff is great. My peppers are eight feet tall. But we don't know the science behind it yet.